just like always. Wait, Napoleon? Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video where we're gonna be taking a look at what would happen if EU4 started in 1914. So as you can see, it's July 28th, 1914, the day that the Great War or World War One started. And this is our scenario. Obviously, I'm using the extended timeline mod for this video because setting up these borders in actual vanilla EU4 is literally impossible. The province shapes are all wrong. You can't really have the type of sub Objects that these nations have during this time frame and it's simply much much easier and much more accurate to simply start off with the extended timeline mod. Obviously some of you may know what the map looks like during this time but we have Canada up here, there are Dominion of Great Britain, Newfoundland, the US, Mexico, some Central American nations, this is what South America looks like, this is what Africa looks like, lots of French, British, some German, some Belgian colonies too, South Africa as well, it's a Dominion of Great Britain, some Portuguese colonies and some independent nations over here which may not be the most accurate since they showed up in origins but I'm not too sure of that of course Ethiopia is free as ever this is what the Middle East looks like we got the Ottomans Persia some Arabian nations right here this is India British India all of these guys are basically sort of vassals of Great Britain this is Southeast Asia Dutch East Indies American Moluccas Australia it's a dominion we got revolutionary China right here by the way which I think is supposed to be the Republic of China not sure though not sure they're definitely not Ching. We also have Japan right here, they own Korea, this is what Russia looks like, and everyone knows the borders over in Europe. Britain, Portugal, Spain, France, Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Big Austria, Italy, Switzerland, Romania, Montenegro, Serbia, Albania, Greece, and Bulgaria. And that is what the map is looking like. Now, in this scenario, the war has already started, of course. This is the map mode of the war. And like I said, because it's July 28th, it's already started. We got Austria fighting France and their colonies, Britain and their colonies, Serbia, Montenegro, Belgium and their colonies, Luxembourg, Russia, Nepal for some reason, and all of those other nations are basically the colonies. And we have France, the other main belligerent. So it's basically Austria versus France. I don't know why it's not Austria versus Serbia, but oh well, it's Austria versus France and basically we have these guys fighting Austria and Germany and their colonies. So it's definitely looking like France and their side are the most powerful side at this point. Of course Italy and the US haven't joined yet so we'll see what happens. Now as always we will check back in in 1950 this time but because the war has already started we're also gonna go over the timeline when we check back in and see how everything progressed. So let's get this scenario started and before we begin if you enjoy this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you want to see more what if scenarios like this or more U4 videos in general definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Let's get this scenario started and we'll check back in in 1950. So now it's 1950 and boy oh boy have we had some changes. Let's start off with North America for a little subtle conquering where we can see that the US have taken out actually a pretty big chunk of Mexico over here. Over in South America, British Columbia seems to have grown, Venezuela shrunk, Colombia is looking pretty big, I don't know what's up with that. Peru seems to be fighting Brazil in the Brazilian-Argentinian Nationalist War. We can also see that Chile has gone, Argentina seems to have uh, conquered that region over there. Not a lot of changes in Africa for now, Naj seems to be consolidating the Arabian Peninsula over here. Persia also has grown a bit, not a lot of changes in India as far as I can tell, but nations are popping out of the Dutch East Indies. We have Thailand down here, very nice, very nice, and Japan is doing some conquering themselves we can see that they've taken a bunch of provinces here from China, some down here as well, and right now they're fighting Russia in the Russian reconquest of Mina, I'm not gonna try and say that, but uh, yeah, we have this war going on. Obviously, the most interesting things are happening over in Europe, where we can see that the Netherlands and Luxembourg have gobbled up Belgium, so bye-bye Belgium over there. And if you're wondering for World War One, yep, Austria and Germany lost that, of course, but not as much as in real life, definitely, since we can still notice these borders right here. Meanwhile, Italy. They've been going wild, dude. Look at what they own, man. Look at all of this right here. They fought the Ottomans. They fought a bunch of nations over here in the Balkans. And they've taken over a lot of things. Serbia has lost a couple of provinces to Austria. Bosnia has popped out out of Austria. Albania is down to one province. Bulgaria is gone. North Macedonia has popped up. Romania seems to have migrated from here down to here. Are they trying to replace Bulgaria? Romania has Constantinople. Have they impaled the Sultan? Can that happen in extended timeline? No. Not sure, not sure, but they may have done it. That is what Romania looks like. Germany have also expanded quite a bit into 
Russia over here taking a lot of land from them and that is what things are looking like right now. The Ottomans have shrunk severely, even the Hafsids here have popped out of them. They are supposed to be like Syria or something. Georgia's popped out of here, even Russia has expanded into Anatolia as we can see right here. Is Italy fighting anyone? No. Is Germany fighting someone? Yes, they're fighting France in the German reconquest of Alsace. Listen, looks like these guys decided to start World War II, but this time over a different reason, man. We also have some British colonies being rebellious. They fought some independence wars. I don't think they won, but that is what things are looking like right now, man. Especially in Europe, the situation is very, very interesting. Like I said, we'll take a look at the timeline. So let's go over that on medium speed. This is probably the war is still going on right here. Oop, there we go. Austria just lost a bunch of land. The Commonwealth popped out. Germany lost Alsace, of course. Oh, and there we go. Germany expanded over here a bit. Luxembourg is pushing into Belgium. The Commonwealth has shrunk. Italy just took out a big chunk out of the Ottomans. France just annexed Tunis. Oop, we have Italy conquering in the Balkans as well. Greece is down to one province. They're conquering up here too. Romania also pushed into Bulgaria. Georgia just popped out. Oop, the Ottomans just lost even more territory to Italy. Najd is growing down here. What's going on back in Europe? Romania is expanding. Austria is expanding. And that is where we are right now. Definitely very, very interesting first segment of this scenario. Honestly, man, I really don't know who's going to be the most powerful by the end. Right now in the Great Powers list, we have Britain, the US, Japan, Germany, France, Russia, Italy, and the Netherlands. And the US is an economic hegemon. But listen, while they're focusing over in North America, they're also allied to Italy. Maybe Italy can be the dominant power in Europe. Right now, they and Germany are looking like the strongest nations in Europe. Looks like staying a monarchy has paid off for them. We'll check back in in the year 2000. So now it's the 2000s. Let's take a look at all the changes that have happened. Let's take a look at North America first. Canada is losing to someone? <gasps> occupied by the US. Occupied by Sharjah. Wait, isn't that one of the Emirates? Let me... Let me see. Let me see right here. Oh yeah, it is. It is Sharjah. Why are they fighting? Okay, in the Sharjahi War for Independence? Oh, so they were a protectorate of something of Great Britain. And now they're fighting Great Britain. Well, this is what that war looks like. Looks like the US and Brazil have decided to team up instead of the US declaring 10 imperialist wars on them, forcing them to change their government. But now they're together. I wonder if the US will take something from Canada or not. I guess it remains to be seen. Mexico is still looking about the same. We have some consolidation by Honduras in Central America. Colombia has grown a bit, Brazil is huge, Argentina is gone, Peru has shrunk, and uh, I'm guessing all of these other guys, they'll be uh, gobbled up by Brazil pretty soon too. Or wait, maybe not. They're actually allied to Brazil. Going over to Africa, there's still lots of colonies, but lots of nations breaking free as well. We got Kilwa, Makua, Mandana, Zulu, Chokwe, Ndongo, Lunda, Luba. But like I said, still mainly colonies in the northern half, but mainly independent nations in the southern half? Nice, that's what I like to see. Going over in the India region, all of the British territories are being occupied by, well, let's see all of these nations that they are fighting over here. I mean, listen, they got Persia from the west, China from the east, some little Indian nations from the inside. So yeah, looks like Britain, oh, they're losing four different wars. Uh, this is gonna be fun to see. Persia, meanwhile, is growing in the Persia region. Oman has grown a bit as well. In Southeast Asia, it's a complete mess. Lots of nations popping out over here. France conquering China, Japan conquering China, the Germans getting involved too. Mongolia has pushed all the way into Tibet. Oh my God, this is as cursed as regular EU4 here as well, ladies and gentlemen. In maritime Southeast Asia, Dutch and Indonesia has managed to reclaim some possessions here. Well, it's actually directly owned by the Netherlands, so yeah. And going over to Europe, we can see that France has shrunk, Provence and Brittany have popped out of them. This province was taken by Spain, and maybe Metz was taken by Germany as well. Spain, meanwhile, are expanding a bit in Morocco, if I'm seeing that correctly. Alba, Wales and Cornwall have popped out of Great Britain. Someone from Scandinavia, but Finland and Estonia are free, and Germany has grown even more in the Baltic and Poland regions. Ukraine has popped out of Russia. We have Moldova popping up. The Commonwealth is still alive. Austria is looking about the same. Italy, I don't think they've expanded too much over here, but Romania, they've definitely lost provinces to both Russia and the Ottomans. And right now, the Ottomans, they're losing a war to Crete in the Ottoman reconquest of that province right there. And that is what the world is looking like in the year 2000. Taking a look at the Great Powers list, not a lot of changes. It's still pretty much the same, except Britain is an economic hegemon. We'll check back in in 2050. So now is the 2050s. Let's take a look at all the changes, starting off once again 
again with North America where we can see that the US no more straight line border with Canada. They've even connected their lands over in Alaska, which is excellent. This happened in that war where uh, I think some of these guys were trying to get free. Not sure, not sure, but Canada, they're still a dominion of Great Britain, bro, and they're still rebellious. Over in South America, the situation is pretty much unchanged since Brazil does seem to like these guys. Well, at least Colombia. Going over in Africa, lots of other nations breaking free. Oh, we have the Rose Wee Empire. They're a stateless society. Very nice, but the French seem to be conquering the South of Africa as well. They've connected almost all of their lands with the exception of Namibia here. They just need one province and they're gonna have a connection all the way from the north to the south. We still have some German colonies here. Nigeria is broken free. We have some other free nations over here. Fulo, shout out to Fulo. Libya is free. This nation, which has always been here for some reason, the British are actually losing their possessions in Africa. We still have some Italian ones though. Going over in the Middle East, Persia is now the dominant power over here. They've even expanded into Arabia and some of these other nations are consolidating too, like the Hafsids, Hejaz, the Rasids, and Oman. In India, the situation is getting even more crazy. All of these dudes are breaking free from Britain and Deccan is emerging as the strongest power over here. Lots of allies, they're fighting Delhi right now and looks like they're gonna continue to be the dominant power in India. In Southeast Asia, I don't even know what's going on here, dude. All I'm gonna say is Thailand looks like the strongest and in Maritime Southeast Asia, Dutch Indonesia is the strongest. I'm not even gonna try and get in to the border gore that is going on over here. Pretty much the same thing is happening in China. Japan is expanding even more. Germany is expanding even more. And the French, well, they're not expanding that much, but we have some smaller nations popping out. China is not looking too good. Mongolia is growing, but they have nations popping out of them as well. And Japan is looking even bigger over here. They're actually number two on the Great Powers list. So good job, Japan. Russia, meanwhile, they're blowing up. Kazakhstan has popped out. Some other smaller nations all around. And yeah, looks like they're getting decimated from every side, even though they start off pretty strong. Finally, going over to Europe, Germany has expanded even more. But right now, are they losing to France? French Malinese War for Independence? Hmm, what's that looking like? And it's looking like hmm, this. So about evenly matched, I would say. France and some of their colonies versus some of their colonies in Germany. And Germany are allied to Austria and Italy. Hey, looks like things are gonna work out for them this time, huh? Meanwhile, Austria, they're not doing so well, man. They're losing. Actually, they're winning versus Romania right now, but uh, yeah, lots of their land is occupied. Romania is back to their almost original provinces, and Italy has blobbed out even more, dude. They almost got the Byzantium borders down. Will they get the Roman Empire borders? We have yet to see, ladies and gentlemen, we have yet to see. Lots of nations popping out in the Caucasus as well. Ukraine, Kiev, who's this? I don't know. Moldavia? What's up with that? Estonia is on this island? Shout out to Finland. Scandinavia is looking alright. Wales, they've gobbled up a big portion of Great Britain. Alba is still chilling here, and luck Luxembourg, they're getting occupied by Austria. We have Vasconia here, what's up with that? France has managed to reconquer Burgundy, Provence is chilling, Switzerland, they're only half of what they used to be. And that's pretty much what things are looking like. Oh, and Catalonia popped out. And that's pretty much what things are looking like in the 2050s. This is the religion map mode, by the way. If anyone wants to see, most nations are actually secular. This is the culture map mode. Not too much changes. We are in the information age. We'll check back in in 2100. So now is the year 2100. Let's take a look at all the changes. Once again, starting off with North America, where we can see the US blobbing out even more. They've even reached the Hudson Bay, I think it was called. Yes, that's true. I am smart. Canada is now two Canadas. Yes. Vinland? Wait a minute. Nice. They're a Danish colony, apparently. Very cool. Have the US been expanding in Mexico as well? <laughs> Not really, but they are fully occupying Mexico right now. Ah, yes. They're about to take more stuff. Very cool. We also have the West Indies forming over here. Haiti, whatever. Colombia, Peru. They're still looking about the same. Ecuador still exists. And not a lot of changes in South America, in Africa. Lots of nations breaking free, actually. Pretty much the only nation that's keeping a hold of their African colonies seems to be France, with all the French colonies, well, pretty much all of them still being intact. We also have Belgian Congo right here, but the other nations, man, most notably the Rosary Empire, they're blobbing out. They're all free. We got a big Sudan, some Italy colonies as well, but Egypt has popped out as well. Looks like these guys here, whatever they were called, they formed Syria. They're even expanding in Anatolia. Italian Maghreb too, and Morocco is huge, ladies and gentlemen. They gobbled up half of Iberia. Can they form Andalusia in this mod? I wonder. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Going over to the Middle East, Persia is a lot bigger as well. 
they've expanded over here in the steppes too a little bit in arabia a little more in anatolia in india as expected the british are almost completely out wait i think they are completely out hmm, let's see yeah they still have some provinces and some subjects but Deccan, man they're looking pretty strong in southeast asia thailand is becoming the dominant power and indonesia has emerged as well along with brunei so we have those guys down there american malacca still right here papua new guinea german new guinea what and then we have revolutionary china looking about the same although the german holdings have shrunk a bit while japan has grown we have this nation here blobbing out they're looking pretty strong mongolia is looking weak kazakhstan is looking bigger and scandinavia has expanded into russia as well russia failing for the second time in this mod what's up with them i guess they're not too strong going over to europe our main area of focus look at wales dude they even have london man you know in real life these guys sucked after they lost world war one but here they also lost but they're actually well listen italy eh, not doing so well right now but austria and germany man they're looking super super strong austria has expanded over here in the previous italian possessions italy are actually losing to austria and persia in separate wars right now so i guess no more alliances right there kosovo has popped out over here romania once again owns constantinople and italy is losing over here to syria and persia romania has shifted north again we have this nation right here what's up with those guys france is getting gobbled up by germany and catalonia apparently spain they're not looking too good portugal they're actually fine galicia vasconia aragon what's up with them but yeah man that's what things are looking like so super super strong from germany Austria, Scandinavia, Persia, the US, Brazil, and even France, dude. France has had a lot of success in Africa keeping a hold of their colonies. But man, Spain and Britain, what's going on there, man? I really didn't expect that. Either way, that's what it's looking like in the year 2100. We'll check back in in 2150. So now is the 2150s and <laughs> what is China? <laughs> we'll get back to that. Obviously, what is Japan as well? Starting off once again with North America, not a lot of changes. South America, not a lot of changes. In Africa though, however, almost all of France's colonies have also broken free. And now we have most of Africa being independent nations. Huge Madagascar, huge Botswana. Look at at this Egypt wow that's a big Egypt right there almost all of these nations here are independent we got some German colonies scattered some French colonies scattered too along with French Ethiopia Omani Somaliland that's a first for me over here in West Africa the nation of Hausa is dominating ah fascist dictatorship nice Borgu Sultanate awesome Nigeria Republic lots of different governments wait I've never checked the government tab government types okay so these guys are a monarchy republic tribal uh theocracy yep i was right but over here in the north we do have morocco forming andalusia a very very big very powerful andalusia and they've conquered almost all of iberia portugal is still alive though they are allied to not too strong nations so andalusia could take them out catalonia is still alive big provence italy is almost gone dude oh my god such a strong start from them now they barely exist syria has pushed well into anatolia romania is somehow still surviving what is this borgo austria come on dude germany they seem to be locked in between scandinavia and austria where can they expand obviously they expanded in scandinavia but can they push into france i don't know will they break their long-term alliance with austria and fight them i don't think so either meanwhile russia is trapped between germany austria scandinavia and kazakhstan persia is looking about the same as last time not a lot of changes in india either gwalior is growing a bit these guys are growing a bit like i said i don't know what's going on in china they're losing to france and to garwal japan they seem to have blown up we have manchukuo here manchu as well solon manchuria Niv Mongolia Chahar lots of nations blowing up but I don't know how the Japanese lost this who knows but even the US have started expansion in Asia we have this province over here being owned by the US I guess the tables have turned and Indonesia is looking pretty strong over here but the US have been expanding on Borneo as well Australia is chilling along with New Zealand just like always wait Napoleon Oh, they have a Bonaparte. I guess he's not Napoleon, but we got Reijda Agba. Very cool. And that's what things are looking like in the 2150s. We'll check back in in the year 2200. So now is the 2200s and uh, what, what's going on over here, dude? France and Italy and Spain, they're all gone, dude. Three of the greatest powers when we started this scenario and now they're almost completely gone. Sure, France has some possessions 
some place, but man, I don't think Spain exists at all. And look at Italy, dude. These two provinces over here, two over here, two over here, and uh, that seems to be it. Oh, they also have Cyprus, big whoop. Now, look at Andalusia expanding in Iberia, and in fact, they've expanded even more in Africa, but they seem to be on the losing side of a war versus Wales and Thailand, apparently. I don't know what that's all about, but look at Provence, man. They got popped out after France got decimated in a few early wars, and Brittany is back as well. And now look at how successful they are, so shout out to Provence. Austria Austria and Germany, meanwhile, they've continued to expand in the usual regions they've been expanding. Austria over here a little bit, and Germany in Scandinavia a little bit as well. Look at Estonia popping up. Looks like uh, Scandinavia have uh, actually decided to replace Russia, so I don't know what's up with that. Can Scandinavia form Russia? I guess we have to see. Romania is still alive. Do they have some strong alliances? Oh, actually, they're a vassal of Austria. Speaking of vassals, let's take a look at some relations. Okay, so Austria allied to these guys. That's a vassal. Germany, uh, they do have some allies. Not a lot, though. What about Wales. Dude, speaking of Wales, man, I think they can actually form Great Britain. Wait, this is Denmark. So why can't they form Great Britain? Do they need a Lothian right here? I'm thinking that's the province they need to form Great Britain themselves, but they're allied to Denmark. Oh my god, is that gonna prevent them from forming it? Anyway, almost no colonies left in Africa. Pretty much every nation has freed itself. Rosewee here, they've got a bunch of subjects. They're pretty powerful. Egypt, it's looking pretty big. Strong alliances. Those are the two most dominant powers in Africa. Nigeria over here, they're getting pretty big too. And Andalusia is dominating the Maghreb. Not a lot of expansion from Persia in the last couple of chickens, but dude, Dude, Dekan from being the most powerful nation in India, they're gone. Look at Gwalior, Kote, and Koch right here, man. They've replaced them completely. Meanwhile, Thailand is expanding in China a bit. Indonesia is gobbling up what's left of these small nations down here. And Japan has shrunk, but there are not a lot of changes over here from the last time we checked in. Basically, it's still pretty cursed. And Kazakhstan owns this for some reason. No changes in South America, or actually Peru has disappeared. And Colombia, they're looking pretty big themselves. Looks like Mexico is about to get squeezed between Colombia, who's allied to the US, and the US of course, and Brazil. They're just chilling down here. That's what things are looking like in the 2200s. This is the Great Powers List. Will we see any changes until the end? Stick around and find out when we check back in in 2250. So now is the 2250s and I don't even know what's going on anymore, man. So let's just go over it. The US have blobbed out even further into Mexico. Mexico is down to like two provinces. We got Colombia over here expanding, but they're losing to the US in the American Colombian Imperialist War. So it looks like the US is expanding down south. Meanwhile, Brazil is chilling. They're also fighting the US. They're on Colombia's side and they're also fighting Nigeria. I don't know what's up with that. Once again, pretty much no colonies in Africa, but we are starting to see very dominant nations. Madagascar, Kilwa, Luba, Yaka, Egypt, Nigeria over here as well, and some other smaller nations scattered around. We also have Provincial Italy down here, Andalusia, Algeria, Provence is really, really expanding over here. Portugal is still chilling though. Wales, they've moved on to continental Europe, dude. Wales is such a powerful nation. Are they even on the Great Powers list? Well, they're not, but they might be soon if they can form Great Britain, which they can't because Great Britain still exists and they're guaranteed by Wales. Ah, Wales, please break that guarantee. Over here we have Germany and Austria actually finally fighting in the Austrian-German imperialist war. So it seems that Austria has declared on Germany and actually they're winning by one point right now. So we'll see how that turns out. Germany has expanded up here. We got Estonia and Finland and Scandinavia has also blown up. I swear, dude, why does every country that takes over this region goes on to blow up? I really don't understand it. Persia, they're still chilling. Not a lot of expansion from them. This nation is expanding. This nation is expanding. And we even got Bengal and some other smaller Indian nations popping up over here. Thailand is looking huge. Indonesia is looking huge. China is looking about the same, but we have seen some territories being conquered back by Japan. And we also got Kazakhstan and Mongolia, apparently. And that's what the world is looking like in the 2250s, man. Getting even more cursed and more cursed. This is the religion map mode right now, by the way. That's what things are looking like. And yeah, we'll check back in in 2300. So now it's 2300, the end of this scenario where we took a look at what would happen if EU4 started in 1914 at the start of World War One. Starting off with North America, we can see that the US have dominated pretty much all of it. Canada, sure, it's still surviving. It is independent. They are allied with the Cape Colony and they haven't been gobbled up by the US. They even own Greenland. Over in 
Central America, Mexico is pretty much gone, being reduced to a one province minor. Wait, who's this down here? Ecuador is still alive, excellent. On the Galapagos Island, shout out to turtles. We have the West Indies consolidating, well, the West Indies, and Colombia has also expanded into the other half of Central America with the US. Arawak, they're still alive, so shout out to them. And Brazil has almost completely taken over the Southern American continent. Over in Africa, there were lots of colonies, pretty much no independent nations apart from Ethiopia, as you guys know. France managed to hang on for their colonies for the longest, but then pretty much every nation popped out of here, and we have some giant nations consolidating, like Egypt, Nigeria, Luba, and Yaka, and some other smaller regional powers like Kilwa, Bonaman, Fulo, and we even have Provence and Andalusia up here in the Maghreb. Egypt has also expanded in Arabia. We have Italian Somaliland, which is actually a crown colony of Austria. In the Middle East, Persia became the dominant nation, conquering all of the Persian Khorasan regions, most of Arabia, and most of Anatolia as well. In India, as you guys know, the British had a lot of colonies, but they started breaking free pretty early, with Deccan emerging as the dominant nation. But now, Deccan, do they even exist? I don't think so. Oh, they do. They're in this one province down here. Kote is dominating the south, Gwalior the north, and this western portion right here is being shared by Persia and the Uyghurs. Then we have Thailand dominating Southeast Asia and the southern half of China. Indonesia popped out of the Dutch East Indies pretty late, but they managed to stay strong over there. The Americans still own the Philippines, and Australia and New Zealand were chilling the entire game. In China, this nation changed hands lots of times, lots of nations popping out, Japan conquering it, Germany conquering it. In fact, Germany is still here, but then Thailand pushed in from the south, the Japanese managed to get back these possessions right here after they conquered them and lost them and we have some smaller nations over here Russia they blew up look at them dude they're so small who would have expected that one of the most powerful nations during this time they would almost completely disappear we got Kazakhstan over here and Scandinavia has moved from Scandinavia to the northern portion of Russia and that's where they are right now going over to Europe Great Britain blew up lost all of their colonies Wales has replaced them and they're looking like a super super powerful nation they've even expanded into France in continental Europe. Speaking of France, they're down to just a couple of provinces over here, and Provence, after being popped out of them, has replaced them, taken over Italy, big portions of Iberia as well. Speaking of Iberia, Spain is also gone, Portugal is about to disappear, with it being shared by Andalusia and Provence, and Italy, a nation which completely dominated the early game, conquering the Balkans and Anatolia as well, is now completely gone. Italy doesn't exist, and two big winners, which were big losers in our timeline, Germany and Austria have have remained strong the entire game, with Austria emerging as the dominant one between the two of them since they did beat Germany in a war. And this is what Germany looks like right now, and this is what Austria looks like right now. But man, who would have thought that some of the most powerful nations in our timeline would go on to almost completely disappear in this one, such as Great Britain, France, Spain, and Russia. And actually the losers of our timeline would go on to become powerful like Germany and Austria. And some strange nations popping out with a bunch of strength, Scandinavia, Provence, Wales, and Andalusia. Who would have thought, man? Who would have thought? In the Great Powers list, we have the US at number one with 11,000 development, followed by Persia, Germany, Gwalior, Austria, Japan, Egypt, and Provence. And the US is an economic hegemon. The US has the biggest army in the world with almost 2.4 million troops, followed by Persia, Germany, Provence, Wales, Gwalior, Brazil, Egypt, Thailand, Japan, and so on. The US have the biggest income in the world with about 11,000 ducats, followed by Persia, Germany, Gwalior, Wales, Provence, Brazil, Japan, and Australia, and so on. Uh, this is looking a little uh, messy here, so I don't know what exactly is going on right there. And this is the religion map mode in the end, all those black provinces are irreligious of course. Nothing too strange in this scenario since a lot of nations have gone secular, so there won't be a lot of religion changes. This is the culture map mode, not a lot of changes here either. Or maybe there are. Listen, I haven't played the 1914 start date in extended timeline, how could I know? And that is what the world is looking like after almost 400 years have passed in our scenario where we took a look at what would happen if EU4 started in 1914. Let me know in the comments below what's the next what if scenario that I should do. If you want to watch me do stuff like this live, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash theredhawklive, and if you want to watch playthroughs, you can subscribe to the second channel. Link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you want to see more what if scenarios or more U4 videos in general, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. And you can become a member today and join the Discord. The link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.